When two objects collide, we can use conservation of linear momentum. We can also apply Newton's law of restitution, which is also called Newton's experimental law. This is that E, the coefficient of restitution, is equal to the separation speed of the objects divided by the approach speed of the objects. Care needs to be taken because it is separation speed and approach speed, not velocities. E can take the values between 0 and 1 inclusive. If E equals 1, then it is a perfectly elastic collision. In example 1a, we can apply Newton's law of restitution or Newton's experimental law. E is the separation speed of the objects divided by the approach speed of the objects. The separation speed, so that's the speed after the collision, is 1 minus 0 and the approach speed of the objects before the collision is 5 minus 0, giving us the value that E is 1 over 5 or 0 0.2. In example 1b, we can still apply Newton's experimental law or Newton's law of restitution. E is separation speed over approach speed, so the separation speed is 5 minus 3, and the approach speed of the two objects is 7 minus 2, giving us the value that E is 2 fifths or decimal equivalent. In example 1c, again, we can apply Newton's experimental law or Newton's law of restitution. We just need to be careful because of the objects are going towards each other before they collide and away from each other after they collide. So the separation speed of the two objects is 7 plus 4 and the approach speed of the two objects is 10 plus 6, giving us the value that of E being 11 over 16. In a typical exam question, it would be expected to have to use both conservation of linear momentum and Newton's experimental law, so you can find two unknowns involved in the collision. And then you may also have to use the fact that impulses change momentum to uh, work out another unknown. So in example two, we can use Newton's experimental law and conservation of linear momentum to create two equations with the two unknowns v1 and v2 and then solve them simultaneously to find the values of v1 and v2. And then finally we can find the impulse acting on the body by considering the change in momentum of the one kilogram mass. Um, that gives us that the impulse is 0.5 newton seconds. Remember that the impulse on both objects is always exactly the same magnitude, just opposite in direction.